Two hands set sheet music on a folding music stand, then pluck at the strings of a viola. I was always drawn to the string instruments. I felt like they were really pretty to hear. I know that I do need to put a little bit of extra work into playing the viola, but it makes me feel good to know that I'm able to produce music, particularly whenever I'm playing in an orchestra. That's a really special experience. Laura Dequila, senior software engineer for Google, draws her bow across the strings of the viola as she practices. I was first diagnosed with hearing loss when I was about four years old. I was in kindergarten and I failed a routine hearing test. As a result, I was fitted for a pair of hearing aids. My teacher would wear a microphone during class that would amplify the teacher's voice for myself. In New York, USA, Laura sips from a mug as she stares out over the sunny city. There are currently estimated to be about 466 million people in this world who are deaf and hard of hearing. And that number is growing, and it's expected to actually reach 700 million by the year 2050. Text appears as Laura strolls down a sidewalk carrying her viola case, technology's golden age. All of this drew me into the technology field and had me thinking about ways in which I could be involved myself in improving the lives of people with disabilities and developing the next generation of technologies that can have a positive impact on people's lives like myself. At the Google offices, Laura walks down a hallway. In a Google Sign Language class, Laura sits with others as the instructor signs to the group. I joined Google in 2016. That provided me with more opportunities to get to apply software engineering towards problems that could potentially benefit millions of people if solved correctly. But there were a couple of experiences where I would go to meetings and it was sometimes a little bit harder for me to follow along, especially if I didn't request any manual captioning ahead of time. This experience inspired my coworker Abigail and I to develop automatic closed captions in Google Slides. Laura and Abigail sit down together as they review code on a laptop. They open Google Slides and speak, watching as text appears along the top of the screen. So how does captions for Google Slides work? It's pretty simple. Whenever somebody is giving a presentation in Google Slides, they just need to click a button to turn on captions. The computer will use its microphone input to pick up what you as the presenter are saying, and it'll stream captions to the screen so that members of the audience who are deaf or hard of hearing can read along with a written transcript of what's being said. But that doesn't mean that it's not something that can make the experience better for everybody. With captions, they can also be beneficial to people who are in the back of the room or people who are struggling with poor audio quality. There's just so many different use cases. At night, Laura stands on a corner and watches as people in cars move around her. Text appears over fluffy clouds and a blue sky. Seattle, USA. Fashion has been a big influence in my life because I just love the creative side. I love how it shows people's differences. It's been a way that I've been able to break down barriers and conversations around my own disability and identity and who I am. K.R. Liu, group manager, brand accessibility for Google, enters a closet lined with shoeboxes. Standing beside her, a woman with short hair pulls down a Nike shoebox. It wasn't until I was about two and a half when I started speaking differently and, and not saying the same word correctly that my parents noticed there might be something going on. So I was testing it. I had severe hearing loss and I've worn hearing aids since I was three. In a kitchen, the two of them play with a golden doodle. In a store, they stroll along shelves of colorful sneakers on display. I've spent most of my life adapting and, and looking at ways how technology can help people with disabilities communicate better in the world and really working towards breaking those barriers down so people can have the tools that they need to communicate and something I struggled with for many years. They talk to an employee behind the counter and KR looks down at her phone. Text appears on the screen as the employee talks. Cool, okay, awesome. Let me get them boxed up and bagged for you guys and you'll be all set. A live transcribe technology, which is transcribing the conversation in real time on your phone, allows me or anyone with any kind of hearing disability or in a moment where you're not able to capture all the sound that you need to in the conversation, you just stay engaged and connected. But also 
can be very powerful and someone speaks a different language, you can transcribe that. It connects people in ways that maybe they wouldn't have been able to without it. While KR sits down for a chat with someone while drinking tea, Laura practices her viola at home. You should always be thinking about how technology can help benefit someone and how it's helping someone move forward in their life, pursue a passion that's important to them. How is that changing people's perceptions of disability and not having it be a negative thing? In New York, Laura stands on a roof and looks out over the city, while in Seattle, KR does the same. When you look at the billion people with disabilities and the people that you connect with your friends and family that are touched with disability in some way, the number is actually 8 billion. And so it's really important that we're thinking about again, like what are we doing to help take that experience and that knowledge and include that in the innovation and looking at where are the barriers in the world for disabled people and removing them. In the Google Sign Language class, the instructor signs with one of the students around the table so many different identities to who someone is, right? There's so many more things about them. Disability is one part. You're seeing that disabled people are incredible problem solvers and thinkers, and so they're really powerful in the ways of innovation. In a music room, the Google Orchestra sets up music stands and instruments for a rehearsal. It's ever more important that we as a society are thinking about challenges that might present to people who are deaf and hard of hearing and thinking about how we can address those and make their experiences as seamless as possible. Laura enters for rehearsal. In the brass section, one trombone player uses a tablet, while next to him, another musician uses a paper binder of music. Disability as a positive or powerful part of who you are, not something you're trying to hide. Technology, when it's doing the right thing, is doing exactly that. Laura takes her seat in the front row, sharing a music stand with another musician as the orchestra plays around her. She studies the music, finding the correct spot, then lifts her bow and begins to play with the others. Text, presented by Google. Produced for Google by BBC StoryWorks Commercial Productions.